Last class we learned about uh, the different characteristics that a wave can have. So we learned about frequency, wavelength, amplitude, uh, period, and wave speed. But today we're going to look at the things that waves can do, how they behave differently from particles um, when they interact with other waves or with different obstacles or media. So there are four different wave behaviors that we're going to look at today. And those are reflection, refraction, diffraction, and interference. So I'm going to write them all down here. And I'm going to look over them one by one. So let's start with reflection. So reflection you've probably heard about is when um, a wave uh, hits an obstacle and rebounds from the obstacle. So it can either hit the obstacle directly, like perpendicularly, and that means it will rebound straight back, or it can hit it with an angle, and then it will rebound with an angle, right? So what I'm gonna draw is that obstacle. So this can be like an obstacle or a wall. And I'm going to draw uh, any type of wave. We can say it's a light wave, it can be a water wave, it can be a sound wave, and it's going to come towards the wall at an angle. So the way we measure angles in waves is with respect to the normal. The normal is a line perpendicular to the, to the wall. So I'm going to try to draw this perpendicular line called the normal. And the angle that I'm talking about is called the angle of incidence. And it's this one between the ray, uh, between the ray and the normal. So we have it's theta i this is called the angle of incidence. Um, and what we want to know is how would it reflect off of the surface? In which direction will it go out? So actually, that angle, which is going to be called the angle of reflection, is always exactly the same as the angle of incidence. That is called the law of reflection. So maybe the drawing is not perfect, but these two angles should be exactly the same. So we have theta i, angle of incidence, and theta r, angle of reflection. And this gives a way to the law of reflection, as I was saying, so the law of reflection, which states that the two angles will always be the same. So written in symbols, it's theta i equals theta r. This always happens in reflection, but it only happens in reflection. So we're going to have angles in some of the other wave behaviors, but this is a characteristic of reflection only. Some examples of reflection would be if you have a sound wave, it hits the, the wall and comes back and you hear it again. So that's what's called an echo. Echo just means that the sound wave reflected and got to your ear again. And it was so different in time that it reached your ear that you could hear it twice. Once when it went forward and once when it passed again through your, um, through your ear. Um, in light, it's how we see in mirrors. So the way that you see in a mirror is that the light um, reflects on, that, on the surface of the mirror and comes back to your eyes. So you, your eyes think that the object is in front of you, um, even though it's yourself or something behind you. And it's also the way in which we see things. So the way in which we see things. Because what happens is that an object, and we're going to look at this closer when we see light, but objects reflect light. So I can see this board as white because it's reflecting all of the light into my eyes. And that's how I know it's there. Okay, let's move on to the second one, refraction. Refraction is a little bit more confusing because in this case, the wave is not reflected completely by a barrier, but the wave is moving through a medium and that medium changes. And that makes the speed of the wave change and sometimes also the direction. So it's basically when a wave changes medium and its speed changes. Speed and direction change. The frequency does not change, only the speed and maybe the direction. 
So how does this look? One example that I can tell you is with water waves. So suppose you have water waves, and I'm going to draw them as straight lines because we're thinking that we're seeing the crests, the peaks of every wave. We're looking at it from the top. So I have some waves coming in. So let's say the waves are in the ocean and they're coming to a shallower part. So what's going to happen there is that the waves are going to go slower. So they're going to hit like one with the other and they're going to become a lot more um, together. So if they were coming at this distance from each other, then they're going to start getting all together bunched up in the shallow part. So this is shallow and this is deep. So that is considered a change in medium. Um, another change in medium can be light waves traveling in water and traveling in air. So suppose you have a glass of water. And you put a straw inside of it. And sometimes you might have seen that the straw looks like it's broken. So it looks something like this. The straw was coming in one direction and then suddenly it looks like it's broken and it's going in a different direction. I don't know if you've seen this before, but next time you're looking at a glass of water, you can check the straw and see that it appears broken. It also happens when you look at someone from outside a pool. So what's going on? The light that is getting to your eyes from the water travels slower than the light that is getting to your eyes from the air. So you see the, the straw as if it was in a different position inside and outside of the water. And a third example in which this happens is the way in which we usually draw refraction. So let me draw it here. So what we have here is that we have a barrier between two mediums, let's say air and water. So it's similar to reflection, but the barrier is not as strong as the barrier in, in reflection. So some of the light is going to cross the barrier into the other medium, most of the light. So what happens is you have the same ray of light coming in at an angle, right? Um, and we draw the same normal line, normal line. And we have the same angle of incidence. Right? So until now, everything's the same. But because the light is going to continue in the other medium, in water, then we're going to have a ray at the bottom of the barrier between the two mediums. But the ray now, what's going to happen to it is that the direction is going to change because of the change in speed. So it's going to fold closer to the normal line because it goes slower. So instead of this angle that maybe looks like um, 30 degrees, we're going to have one smaller, let's say maybe 10 degrees. So we can stay, still say theta r, but now r means refraction. So you have to be careful um, to see if we're talking about reflection or refraction. And refraction follows a different um, equation than the law of reflection. So now the, the angle is not going to be the same. The angle is different depending on in what medium the speed was higher. So we have an equation that relates um, the speed in one medium with the speed in the other with the two angles. And it looks like this. And this is called the law of refraction. So what this means is that the angle is proportional to the speed. The greater the angle, the faster the speed. Um, the smaller the angle, the smaller the speed. And when we see light, we're going to see what this depends on and the effects that it has and the applications that it has in modern day technology. But that is refraction for now. The third wave behavior is called diffraction. And it's the ability of waves to bend around obstacles. So I'm going to write that down. So an example of this is, suppose there's a person um, on a street and they're shouting, they're producing a sound wave and there's a wall um, next to him and another person is at the other side of the wall. So do you think the other person is going to hear the shouts if, it, if he's shouting very loud? Yes, 
because the wave, even though it's going to crash with the, with the corner, some of it is going to bend and it's going to reach the person, even though there's a corner. So the reason why we can hear around corners is because of diffraction. Let's see another example. If you have water waves, so again, water waves look like straight lines. And you put an obstacle that they cannot pass, but you leave a small hole. So it looks something like this. So suppose it's a pool. And you have a wall. And there's water on one side of the, of the pool, and the wall is dividing the pool in half. And then you open a little hole in the wall, and you allow the water to pass by. So the water will fill up the whole other side of the pool, as you probably imagined, and that's because of diffraction. So what's going to happen is that the bit of the water that can pass through is going to pass through the hole, and once it goes around, it's going to bend around the corner like it did here, and it's going to create a big uh, circular wave that sort of seems like it's coming out of that uh, hole. And it's going to fill up the whole pool on the other side, but it's going to change direction and bend around the corner so that it can fill everything up. What happens if there are two holes on the pool? So again, you make a pool, you divide it with a wall, You fill up one side, create waves on one side, and as they're reaching the wall, you open up two holes this time, not one, but two holes. So we're gonna make a hole here and a hole here. What's going to happen with the waves? They're going to cross through the hole and both on both uh, little holes, they're going to bend. So the one on the top is going to bend like this, and the one on the bottom is also going to bend. And it's going to look like two waves, two different waves that are going to be crashing against each other. But diffraction is basically just the ability to bend around objects. The bigger the wavelength of the wave, the easier it is for it to bend around um, an object. And the last one is interference. So interference is what happens when two different waves combine um, because they meet at the same location. So when they meet, several different things can happen. But let's uh, define interference as um, the interaction between two waves. It can be, of course, with more than two waves, but we're just going to look at two waves. Um, suppose there's um, a wave coming from here to the, to the right. And in the same place, there's a wave that is exactly the same, but coming to the left. And they will meet in the middle. They could meet in something called in-face. In-face means that when they overlap, the peaks of one will be at the same location as the peaks of the other, and the valleys of one will be in the same location as the valleys of the other. So this is called in-face. And what happens is that because you have like now two peaks where there are peaks and two valleys where there are valleys, the peaks are going to add up and become bigger and the valleys are going to subtract and become smaller. So in phase, it would end up looking something like this. It's the same wave, but with double the amplitude. And this is called constructive interference. Constructive interference, because it's going to construct a bigger wave. Now, it can also meet completely opposite. So the peak of one wave overlaps with the valley of the other wave, and they cancel out. And then the valley of, of the first wave overlaps with the peak of the other wave, and they cancel out. So you're going to have a peak with a valley, a valley with the peak, a peak with the valley, a valley with the peak. And when you add them all, you're going to just get a straight line. So this is called completely out of phase and it looks like a straight line. There's no wave anymore. 
and this is called destructive interference. These two only happen if um, the waves meet exactly peak with peak or peak with valley. But most of the times they won't meet exactly the same. Um, they might meet peak with almost peak and valley with almost valley. So what's going to happen there is that you're going to have um, some constructive, some destructive. There's going to be places with bigger amplitudes and places with smaller amplitudes. You just have to look at it point by point. So that would be maybe um, one wave coming in and the other one coming in a little later. So there would be big peaks where two peaks match, big valleys where two valleys match, and nothing where there are peaks and valleys at the same time. So this is partially destructive interference. And it's out of phase, but not completely out of phase. So this is partially destructive interference. And it's called out of phase. And here, when, in the one we drew with diffraction, um, where the two blue lines meet, those would be higher peaks. There would be uh, uh, constructive interference there. So for example, here, two, two peaks meet, that's constructive. Here, two peaks meet, that's constructive. In the places where there's only white, when there's no peaks of neither, that's destructive interference. So the places where there's nothing, is destructive and destructive. So you're going to see that better when we use a simulation with water waves inside a pool like this one. And the last thing I wanted to mention about interference is that the waves are not disappearing completely. While they're overlapping, it's going to look like it destructed or like it constructed bigger waves. But once they pass through each other, they'll continue being the same wave that they were originally. So they're passing through each other, but they're not actually affecting. One is not affecting the other. They're just overlapping for a while, and then they'll continue with their unique paths with the same amplitude, uh, frequency, everything that they have.